in the gospel. And I, I don't believe necessarily that Jesus is saying that, you know, his whole purpose was to try to just divide the world and turn us into factions. But on the other hand, he's just hitting a stark, rea stark reality there that not everyone is going to be as open. Not everyone's going to be accepting. And sometimes there will be wedges in relationships over one's relationship with God, one's choice to be a Christian, to be a disciple of the Lord. But the interesting thing here is that he uses this image that he's, there's a baptism with which he wishes to be baptized, a fire that he wishes to ignite into the world. And you think about what fire does. Fire provides light. Fire provides heat, warmth. It also can be destructive. But part of that destructive can also, destructiveness can also be purification. You know, in our own lives, when we allow that fire of God's love to really, really take hold in us, it's going to destroy some things that may not be the best for us. Hopefully, it's going to destroy our pride, our self-centeredness, our ego. Hopefully, it's going to burn out some of those areas of sin or addiction or areas that we just really struggle with. But not just destroying things for the sake of destruction, but rather, like gold being tested in fire, makes it purer, makes it better. You know, we may have, you know, some struggles within our lives, you know, relationships that may have tension, and some of it may be due in part to our choice to live our lives as the gospel calls us to live. We're not always going to be, you know, the one who wins the popularity contest. That doesn't mean that we become strident about our faith, that we become angry Christians, or, you know, as Pope Francis is uh, fond of saying, at least the way it's translated in English, we don't need to be sourpuss Christians, dour, as though we've got no reason to, to celebrate or no joy. Actually, it's the ob the ob the obvious is the opposite, and that is that the flame of God should take away the dourness, the sour puss qualities, and replace them with joy. That is a faith that is well lived. That is a faith that consumes, that provides light and warmth, that destroys the things that become the barriers and allows our faith to maybe where there is that division, maybe where there's that wedge in relationships, to give us the opportunity to slowly but surely, even in the face of opposition, to start building bridges, bridges that people then are able to cross and come to an experience of God's love, of God's mercy, of God's peace. A lot of it really, I believe, comes down to an inability for us to for us as human beings to even fathom the fact that God could love us so much. We get jaded, maybe cl have clouded vision, because we can look around and see all the bad things in the world, and we can focus on them. Crime, violence, war, disrespect for the dignity of human life. St. Paul was really great at giving lists of sins that we should avoid, and we need only look to the headlines of the paper or the evening news. Well, my friends, the fire that the Lord wishes to ignite in our hearts is a purifying fire, one that brings us above all of that. What did we say over and over again in the responsorial psalm today? The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. When we see these other things, they are nothing more than perversions of twistedness of things that are essentially good. It's misusing our gifts. It's taking the stuff that God has given them and given in to an idea of selfishness or ego or, or whatever, to get whatever we want, however we want it, at whatever cost we need to do. Rather, let's pray that that fire come down on the earth to purify first and foremost our hearts our intentions, our lives as Christians, and that in our lives being converted and transformed, we can see that also taking place in our world and in our culture. Amen?
Let's turn to the Lord.